I mean, I said these exact words to LeBron. We can take this risk because you make more money off the court annually than you do on the court. So the worst scenario for you, you have to lose both arms and both legs not to get your money, mm -hmm. right? So we're able to structure in a way to where we protect him, the cap going up, the whole thing. Can't start this episode without toasting to another amazing season on the shop, making incredible moments and having amazing conversations. So cheers, cheers, brother. By the way, Cordae, when you first came out, you was in a group, right? Yeah. YBN. Yes, sir. How has that been in the group? And then how's it being solo? What's the difference? It, it was dope because we was just all, I mean, I'm still young now, but we was just all like super young and just dumb. You yeah. know, just doing dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. But we all kind of just had, like, different things of what we wanted out of this. You know, none of us, like, grew up together in the same oh, city. I, yeah, the same. So it wasn't, like, a normal group where y'all... Yeah, it wasn't like like we came up together. Like, Namir was from Alabama, Jay was from Texas. I'm from Maryland. And Namir just really showed me a lot of love off the strength of uh, my bro Simba. So he rocked with Simba music so much, who got locked up, and me and Simba did music together. So he seen me and was like, yo, you trying to do it? And we just, you know, built the relationship then. But um, we kind of just all like had a different like work ethic and like things we seen and things that we wanted to do out of it. And kind of just how I had all different pathways. So that's why I kind of like ended up going solo. But it was cool like being in a group. I tell you what, the advantage of being in a group is like, and that's why I kind of started my own thing with high level. It's like, it can be, because I record so much, it can be a song that may not fit my album like systematically or like concept-wise or sonically, but I know it's still a great song. You can just throw it on a group mixtape. Uh, throw it, throw it on a group yeah, album, yeah. you know. Meaning it don't fit the concept of your album, but it's still a good record. Yeah, it's still a good record, so boom, we gonna throw it to the group thing, you know? I, I wanted to ask, like, your peers mm -hmm. put out music, like... Non-stop. Yeah, like, yeah. do you ever feel the pressure of that? Like, am I, am I missing something? Am I skipping, like... Your process is your process. Because what I just learned is about how you how you come back. Like, if you take, like, a year or two off, and it's not like you taking off, you chilling, but, like, just in between albums, if you come back with that fire, then it's like it makes it bigger than ever. Because um, your favorite cousin, I use this analogy, it's not the cousin you always see, like, growing up. It's the cousin, like, you only see him oh, yeah, at, like, yeah. the family reunion yeah, and yeah. once or yeah. three times a year, Christmas, Thanksgiving. It's not the cousin that live across the street from you. That nigga getting on your nerves at this point. <laughs> you know, y'all fighting and shit all the time. All the time but yeah. the one you see, like, only every now and then. So, um, just trying to find a balance for that. But, yeah, just putting thought and care into everything. Like, even, like, my stage show, like, I'll sacrifice on making a bunch of money for a show. Like, I might get paid, like... 200 a show, but I done invested so much because I got a full band. You know, you got lights. And I'm saying 200 is the number. Of course, yeah. Number, you know well, you saying? said it. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been if he got paid 200 for a show, how much did we get to take? Ah, uh, man. Like, I, 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 I like to sign up a lot of artists on the 99 one. <laughs> oh, all that I... Dang. God, I imagine if you had that cut, Rich. What's the problem? God, man? Lee. God, you Rich, know, imagine if you had that cut. You know, and I, and I feel like that's showing love. <laughs> I, I feel like that's. <laughs> I don't see a problem with it. I, I felt like that's showing up. But 99 you know, yeah. one? 99 one. So one your way, 99 No, way. 99 my way. You get oh. to retain the one. <laughs> that's that's a, you retain that. You. you retain How that. How are they supposed to live off that, Drew? <laughs> hey, man, you know, we make sure we take care of everybody. And now, Drew, you about to headline your first tour. How many cities you doing? Uh, 36. Mm. 36. Yeah. What's could have been cut on that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why you, why you, why you, why you, why you rubbing your hands about He want the back end. Look at that. <laughs> We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk. He got his hand in it. But let me ask you something. You about to headline your tour. I was reading yes. that your mom was disappointed and felt like you was wasting your time yeah. in life doing comedy. Yeah. yeah. Now that you had, did she still? I, heard, well, I think not she's necessarily, still. Not necessarily. She wasn't disappointed and wasting my time. I think. And it was, I think it was my grandma that, that really didn't want me to do it. It was really all of them as a whole. Because, you know, it, it sounds yeah. so great. Yeah, Because yeah, 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 yeah. his parents is uh, highly, like, they're yeah, in the yeah, education. Yeah, very, very much, uh, yeah, yeah. 
my dad was a pilot, my mom worked for the CDC. Uh, so, you know, you got to understand what it sounds like talking about being a clown, you know what I'm saying? She's like, yo, it sound like you we did all these academics and you trying to do this? Like, come on. Uh, but yeah, nah, I think she she always recorded me when I was a kid. So she she supported too, and she didn't even know she was supporting it. But it just, when I, when I said I was going to drop out of college, yeah, she, it was more, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, when it clicked. Yeah, it's like, hold up. That's, that's what you're taking that jump. You're taking that leap. That's what she yeah. turned this shit ignite on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What she the hell are you the talking switch. about? Yeah, yeah, They flipped the switch off. How, how did that conversation go, by the way? Uh, I remember I, the, the day I told her, she cried. Um, then, I, then I showed up back at the house, and my grandma was like, you don't, you, you, I don't call us for stuff. I know you're about to be calling for money and all that other stuff. <laughs> don't call us. Just don't call us. You know, I'm man. like, damn, I, I just got here and shit. I ain't gonna call, I ain't call y'all yet. Like, I'm good, I'm good, you know? But it took, it took time and, uh, you know, I, I, I think they just had to understand what the dream was and, like, that I was really attached to it and I, and I really wanted to pursue it. And, and I think she thought it was gonna be like something. Cause you know, even same with rapping, you tell your parents you're gonna be a rapper. It's, it's the most looked down upon yeah, profession. It's, it's horrible. What's it's worse, if, if y'all got, y'all, do y'all have children? Yes, yeah. of course. Okay, so if one of your kids come to you like, yo pops, I'm trying to rap, what's worse? Them like, with no credentials, right? Yeah. Like this, no, I always say this, there's nothing worse than being an up and coming artist with nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. That or comedian, like what's like worse, like most looked down upon. It sound goofy. Both of them are horrible. I, 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 both I'm, horrible though. I would yeah. tell the truth. For me, I love both, like comedy and hip hop. Your two favorite like, things. Two, yeah. More yeah, than sports, maybe. Yeah. Like sports yeah. is right there. Yeah. But if my son or my daughter came and said they wanted to be a rapper, you know, you're supposed to. The right answer support. is support your kids and blah 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 blah. I can't say I would love that because it's not that I don't love rappers. It's like that's a very, that's a thin needle to slice to actually be. Because what is a successful rapper? If my child wanted to be a rapper, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm definitely not gonna. I'm unless they're like dead, like nice at making records. Like if I hear unless I hear a hit. Or just like, or just good music or real no, you talent. You hear a talent, you hear the skill. Unless I don't hear, in my opinion, if I don't hear a talent, I'm a, I could be a hypocrite. I'm like, nah, I'm a heavily whoa, whoa, advised whoa, against. Whoa, 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 What about the rappers that you don't like? That's out streaming you. Absolutely, I'm I've been wrong no so names. many times. You've been wrong so many it. times. You may be wrong about your son. Yeah, listen, I'll but just. Right, me and Maverick has had this conversation about when you actually realize. You were smarter than your parents. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. That's a that's a interesting that's thing. That's uncomfortable. That's super uncomfortable. So while you're telling your son, son, I don't understand. You should rap. He's like, Dad, I ain't gonna lie to you. You were kicking way too many bars. Songs should be one minute and a half. <laughs> your songs were four minutes, Dad. Your that's a low bar when your kid does that to you. I'm like, well, you just lost your first investor. <laughs> <laughs> you just no. lost. Your first. No, but, but, so I go ahead. For me, for me, what is it is. And I think what our kids don't understand is we work in the business to where we understand how hard it is to be successful. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. It's not a discouragement of their talent level, but it's, it's how hard it is to be successful. So like, oh, you want to be a rapper or you want to be a comedian? Well, are you willing to commit to the years and years and years of not being yeah. successful, that's on one end. And the and, other and end, I'm thinking about my investment. I'm about to say, and, and I feel like Granny, I'm not supporting you when you're 45. Yeah, yeah, right, I'm right. giving you a budget. You got a, you know, ten thousand well, dollars max. Say, yeah. Once you run out, I that's give you, it. That's I all give all you I'm two investing. years. Yeah. I was just to make ask it. That. I might put yeah. a time. I'm about to say, my mom, my mom, she, we had gotten to the peak of it because I was in the house and. You know, I'm back from college, so I'm, you know, I'm in like 23, 24. Yeah. So like, hey, hey, figure it out, figure yeah. it out. So I had kind of like that two year break, and I love my mom for that because she really let me use the house as like a like a movie set. So you was making videos at her. Man, room. I'm talking. About, I'm flipping the sofas. I'm putting. Oh, the yeah. I'm not going. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not going. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. But, but I would flip it back before she get home from work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes she would notice, like, where the hell is my stuff? Like she would just be looking for random stuff, and it, you know, but. I, I'm thankful because she did give me that grace period and let me pursue my dreams and was taking so care of So she got a piece. So she got a piece of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you know, have to so support. She cut it. She's involved in the team now. Is there a cutoff? Is there okay? You're totally. thirty and not signed. Do you, yeah, is I there mean, a at some man. point it's getting ridiculous. Like, you gotta get a job. Yeah, but also you have to do s something while doing that. It yeah, can't just that's be true. just that. Like you have to do something else while at least because. 
really a lot of successful people work somewhere while trying to pursue, pursue their, their dream. dream. And then once they got on and 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 that part. He was just at home rearranging furniture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put this you gotta go. No, 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 but I was working. I worked at Red Lobster for a little bit, but then what I quit. What you doing? When I quit, let me tell you about the day I quit. The day you I quit. Been, you must have got a lot of tips, man. Hey, I actually wasn't making too much, man. Really? I sucked. Yeah, nah, I was dropping drinks on. on <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. it was it was stupid. But I remember one day I knew I had to get up out of there, man. The, the manager yelled at me. I, I, I was, <laughs> you know, when you prepping the stuff, you prep the food. And he was like, you're not supposed to put that there. You're supposed to put that there. And he grabbed my hand and like threw it and it knocked over some soup and some other. <laughs> and it was a whole big scene and everybody was staring at me. I said, man, you know what? I'm better than this. Man. I'm getting a pat <laughs> hey, And I dipped. That was my last day. That was my last day. I never went back. I, I started doing skits. You know, I started everything, man. That was How long day. before you got your ch first check after oh, that? Man, it was about two years before the first check. And what was your first check that? doing? Um, I think the first big check was the Drake Laugh Now Cry Later video. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what broke you? What made you, like, explode? Was it one video on Instagram? No, nah, it wasn't one. It was just you, accumulation. Man, yeah, it was accumulation. Consistency. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency. Yeah, consistency. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Consistency. Yeah. Just and, and when did you know we're talking about success as a rapper. What is the moment a rapper knows their success, like you've made it, like I'm good, like, hmm. and are you a success? Do you feel successful now as a rapper? You know, it's funny because I have like multiple platinum records. I might have like five records that's like platinum and gold, but I don't have like a quote unquote like hit, yeah. if that makes sense. But yeah. you can, but I have multiple platinum records and I can tour all across the globe, you know, 3,000 capacity venues, et cetera, the way it is. But I didn't really feel successful Probably when I got nominated for a Grammy for best rap album off my first album, like that's what the moment I felt like it. I can tell you when you broke, mm. when you spit that verse. I think you were in a barbershop. Yeah, 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 literally. That's yeah, 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 he yeah. Spit, he spit that verse in that barbershop, and you started talking about the older rappers and the generational thing. Yeah, that's when we knew he could spit. That's when I knew. knew that's when I knew you could spit. Yeah, and it was like it was just a matter of time, because it wasn't just the fact that you could freestyle, because it was anybody. People, not anybody could do that. It's a lot of people. But it was, a, but it was the depth of the freestyle that I was like, you knew, oh, he's super talented, mm. um, and that you were gonna have, you were gonna get a check. Somebody was gonna pick you up and, and put you on. You, your consistency level was just nonstop. Yeah, I've been, yeah. I was watching, and and I watched the other guys. You, were, there was a lot of people around your There's a bunch. period yeah. of time, yeah. and I seen them just run out of steam. They couldn't. They, they ran out of moves when they couldn't find any more dance challenges. Yeah, <laughs> that was a bad trend right there. Man. <laughs> that was around 2020, man. It was that bad. Was bad. That that, everybody doing I mean, the dance TikTok. challenges right Yo, out? listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so yeah, glad yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, participate yeah. in that. Smart. Because yeah. even I've only been in the game, it'll be five years really this year. But I was already, even rappers that started doing TikTok seen, rappers and stuff. Yo, yeah, yeah. I've seen so many artists just come and go. Like one person be the yeah. hottest thing, then they just come and go. My joint just been like, bloop, bloop, bloop. Blue cup, blue cup, blue cup, and I and I'm I'm happy it's been this way, and I'm just keep going. These are my brothers, man, and I they've heard me talk about this, and we had the conversation with Two Chains, and I started talking about independent artists, and he said, "Style, you don't know what the dollars. dream is. A million, a million dollars, a million dollars is the dream. Yeah. You know for a fact, yeah, that's not the dream. Mm -mm. And the same way we are executives, right? And not even executives, just our age." There was yeah, a period of time. Oh, there was exactly. a period of time where yeah. we thought, we thought for a fact, yo, if I can get $100 million, we good. And then it changed to a billion dollars. It changed to a lot more money. It just really mm -hmm. changed. But in our minds, when we were kids, a million dollars was a big deal. So, oh, yeah. we're putting a, so we're putting a million dollars, the same million dollars on an 18-year-old. They don't give a fuck about a million dollars. If somebody can't come to him and give him a million dollars and buy him out of his dreams, yeah. it's not even close. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that a million dollars is good money. But, it's, but you know what you're worth. Totally. Yeah. Now, speaking of worth, because we have a guy here who deals with people's worth all the time. Rich, when you negotiate in deals for athletes all the time, that's what you do. And obviously, you represent Brown, who did short-term deals long. How do you think about the length of a deal? Like, should athletes have really long? Would you rather an athlete sign 10-year deals, two-year deals? How do you think about that? It's based upon the athlete, mm -hmm. right? You know, when you're talking about a guy whose value consistently is going to be at the max level, then it gives you more options, right? You can not necessarily take more risks, but you can be a little bit more Meaning, flexible with your approach. You know the guy going to be valuable. Yeah, because he's going to be there. And then there's some guys like when I was negotiating Eric Blesso's contract or Tristan's contract, 
it's a difference because everyone thinks like, okay, if I average 30 and 10, I'm a max player. Or if I average 20 and, no. Families think that. Oh, well, if he had 25 tonight, he's a max player. There's so many components that go into being a max player. And a lot of it is way more than what shows up in the stat sheet. What's his approach? What's his professionalism? Timing, too. Timing. You That's know, good. the value to the team, where the team is at. If, the, if your team is playing meaningless basketball, how many guys are you going to put on max deals? Maybe one, right? And so in a guy like Eric's case, this kid was from Birmingham, Alabama, was the 18th pick in the draft, and he was further, he was closer to being out the league after year one than he was being so, to so $70 deal. million. Dollars. You get what I'm saying? Totally. And so I have to evaluate that. And you just never know how long someone's going to play. How hard is the conversation with a, just gonna with ask a player or a, get that. Yeah, a, a player or a family? Like, if I come to you when you represent Lil Mavi, I'm like, Rich, you got to get my son a max deal, and you got to tell me he's not a max player. It's very difficult because very few people actually value your expertise because it's their son that's the talent. Mm. So now it's like, well, if my son's a number one pick coming in, how much do we really need you? But, and so what I say to them is this. Okay, now, if you go to Apple, Coca-Cola, all the major corporations, yeah. ask them how much money they spend annually on protecting their business. They don't cut corners. And if you needed heart surgery, are you going to urgent care? <laughs> or are you going to get the You're best... You're for a discount for a doctor? <laughs> But this is what I'm saying. So, but, you, but because it's a sport, you want to take a discount on your infrastructure. Silly. Right? It's because you're more worried about what you're paying somebody. Yeah. And so I say, okay, well, okay, you're saving 300000 annually to miss out on $40 million. And most players get full off of ego. But you need to be full off of education because that's the real nourishment, right? You have to value expertise. Well, how about players who got max deals that the player's looking at the kid going, why'd he get a max deal? He ain't even all that. Well, that's the worst part about our business. Comparisons, Comparisons are the thief of joy. You cannot do yeah. that because it's all situational. The whole point of life is to, in business is con continuing to get bad attempts, right? We, you cannot hit a home run without an attempt. So I try to explain to guys, this may be a single for you, or you make it hit a double, you know, but we get back up to play. In that business, there's transparency. Right? Yeah, because everybody's the everybody knows the everybody knows the deal. Yeah. yeah. In your business, as an artist, yeah. do you look at what other deals people sign and go, shit, I'm way i I'm yeah. way hotter than this kid. How come he got XYZ? Absolutely. But a beautiful thing that I love about making music, and I know Drewski can say the same thing, like. You can only guess how much your artists make. You can only guess totally. how much Drewski make versus all the athletes. You know. Y'all information is public. And I'm like, oh, thank God niggas don't know how much money I make. Like, Lord. But um, it is, well, it's, You like that idea? Yeah, I like that people you, don't so you, know how So much do you I like have. the fact, but how do, but when somebody who's not that with Could. the pen or whatever, yeah. and you see this, yo, this kid got a $20 million blah, 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 blah. Yeah. A label deal. Yeah. Well, I try to, I think one of my greatest assets is I try to look at all things with no ego, like from an outside perspective. So I can be like, okay, they might sell more records than me or like they might, you know, just try to think of it. But when I look at it, okay, well, actually I've sold more records than this person. They had to spend less money on me for these, me to sell these amount of records. I sell way more hard tickets, which is like, I value that way. And I know you can attest to the same thing. I value my hard ticket sales way over like a first week number. The fact that you look at your hard ticket sales, he knows for a fact what his fandom is. Yeah. And you have your version of that too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. In your business, there's an interesting statistic that 45% of Gen Z, that demographic, they want to be their own business owners yeah. using social media platforms to create like businesses is, yeah. right. like you did. So then I, they're looking at you, you're the new P. Diddy, right. okay? So these kids are looking up to you. What advice do you have for all of these creators out there who think they're going to get in the game and do their thing? Yeah. Please give them your best piece of advice. 
you gotta be consistent. Everybody in my generation thinks it's like, because you see it, you see people posting cars, Ferraris, you see houses, the Airbnbs, you see all this and you're like, oh my God, I can, or you just feel like you're a failure. And I used to do that. I was dumbing myself down and watching. I would catch myself looking at social media. And I'm like, yo, I gotta, I gotta put this down. Like I gotta put the phone down. I gotta step away. Everybody's getting drunk. Everybody's smoking weed, everybody chilling. And I was looking at this stuff and I'm like, damn, how are these people that look like they're doing it? Maybe they really even weren't. Or how are they doing this stuff? And I had to sit back and look and like, man, I gotta figure out what my purpose is. So once I figured out what my purpose was, that's when I knew, okay, this is what I'm gonna apply pressure doing and be consistent doing. But how did you figure it I would, out? Because I would see other creators that I would look up to like before I even started like, uh, Fatboy SSC or uh, like Shiggy did his thing. Like yeah, and I watched, I watched, I, I tried to learn from the mistakes awesome. of them as well. Like I was watching how it, it had like its peak and then I watched how it had its downfall of all that, you know. He lost and a lot not of throw anybody's name under the bus. I think they're all great people and they're all doing what they're supposed to be doing in life. But I think the biggest thing I noticed is that you have to be consistent. Like I would see other dudes that I would maybe uh, do like a collab video with and I'll be like, um, what do you do? Like, what, honestly, like, what, like, how'd you get to this point? And they'd be like, man, you know, I failed at this, and I tried this out, and I tried this. I ain't gonna lie, you don't miss, bro. This, yeah, he yeah, don't yeah. miss. Like, straight up, I wanna yeah. say it if I, he don't miss, bro. Nah, I've not seen that. a sure. Drewski video that don't have me <laughs> laughing. Like, straight up. I appreciate ever. that. Don't That's miss. Real. Yeah. Hey, Drewski, oh, let me ask you, do, are you getting, now that you become more, you know, people recognize you on the streets, or people pulling up on you like, be funny, do that thing. Like, yeah, yeah, man, I, I get that a lot. That, that, that's probably the worst. I think all comedians get that. They're like, if you tell them you're a comedian, they be like, all right, tell me a joke. And it's like, come on, man, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay for that, right? <laughs> you gotta come to the show or something. When you're trying to get on, how important is it to the juxtaposition of being original or like following the trend that you know that's hot and is popping? Um, just trying to be original. I'll try like small things, like just rapping over, I remember the Migos flow. This is like yeah, 2015, yeah. 2016, that that's when deal. that was. When it hit the so Versace, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but just the Migos cool. flow in general, like dominating the sound of music. I was like just experimenting, but I, I kept that shit in the vault. You know, I was you always- You didn't put it out? Yeah, I never you made put it. it. Yeah, yeah, I made it, but I, I just kept it in the vault because I'm like, Grow, I grew up in a certain area, you know, like, and it wasn't the best neighborhood, but I never killed nobody. I never shot at nobody, so I can't rap about that because I've never done that. But they, they didn't do that either. But no. going back to another era, that's what Bone Thugs and Harmony did. Yes. They were like Migos. Yeah. Like, they were the like, first they were. Nas rap like that. Jay Z did, rap like Biggie, that. Big Biggie rap track. like yep. Biggie did yeah. it. Everybody, you couldn't, because it worked so crazy, it was like, I gotta do it. And, but, 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 but it was honestly not from a trend perspective. It was homage. Almost, it was homage. Yeah, yeah it was respect. Sure. And they'll yeah, think. I have no clue what the hell that means. You don't know. You don't know how you are. We're gonna get you homage. I just keep hearing homage. We're gonna get you What the fuck is homage? Cheese. We're gonna get cheese. It's a cheese. I was gonna say because because Scott was asking about. I mean, PR said when you pop it. See, in sports, in sports is different. Sports is a lot like in the streets. If me and you got the same make. If, if I feel like you and I are on the same wavelength in terms of finances, mm -hmm. we the same guy. Yeah. In sports, especially in basketball, if I'm a max player and you're a max player, in my opinion, we're the same guy. A lot of times, how you pop it, oh, I got a signature shoe. Not really, because you can, you can have a signature shoe and no business. Mm. So it's no point in you having a signature shoe if you don't have a business, yeah. that doesn't make sense. Those two things on the line. But going back to the ego, to feed the ego of the athlete, you do what? Put their name on it. Terrible. Please. Right? And so, and, and so now, when you talk about a sport and when you talk about infrastructure, yeah. if everybody around that person can't really understand the value of this and, and what it actually is, then they're going along with it too. And before you know it, now your, your career is going like this when you finally realize and you look back and it's just like giving your publishing away. Have you had an athlete retire yet? I had an athlete stop playing basketball and not officially retire, but I haven't had an athlete retire yet. But how, does that, how does that go? They just say, Fuck. Well, you just, you know, 
The contract hit. Oh, okay. Well, the, that has something to do because, with the Because the plan. thing, I, the reason I was asking the question, because to me, the thing that athlete, the hardest part for me being, if I was a professional athlete, which I used to dream about being, you still, and me both. I still dream about it, I ain't gonna lie. Same. I still air dribble and shit and be in the, but so it's like your career, earnings wise, goes like, th if you're good, it goes like this, like this, like this, it plateaus, and, and then drops. it fucking yeah. falls off a cliff. But all the way up, you build a lifestyle mm -hmm. that is here. Mortgages, cars, travel. That would be so, but like ex entrepreneurs and executives, we don't, our life isn't like that. My question to you is, as an entrepreneur, the year on year uncertainty. Yeah. You great. have no idea. What's gonna happen? When now. the cliff's gonna fall. And we're, di we're in a tough year now. And you, have to, you, you have to walk with certainty all the time. When so, it's constant uncertainty. So I read a quote, I was reading about, I was reading about Shell Nadelson this morning. He had a quote where he said, the year in 2008 when the world crashed, his stock went way down. And he told ABC News, I lost $25 billion, but so what? I started with nothing. He said, as an entrepreneur, you don't have fear. There is no such thing as fear. There is concern, but no fear. But that, by the way, that's for I'm me. always, by the way, by the way that's I wake the, up every day concerned, way, man. and sometimes I have to try and man. find why am I, because I'm always thinking the next something phone call, wrong. Yeah. somebody's going to say something that but went wrong. Come then, from that. Man, all, that's, that's, when that's, my phone rings, I'm like, fuck, here, this is the one. shit is going this too one. good. I'm concerned. Man, that, you got that, that feeling like the, something's about to happen. That's the, that's the, that's the well-trained, experienced entrepreneur. What I'm really want to get to is most entrepreneurs don't understand that line. Mm. When the getting's good, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. If you don't rap, you don't, you're not in entertainment, you're not in sports, people will run towards being an entrepreneur. I hear it all the time. <laughs> they have no idea. I remember when I went to an event last night, I wanted to leave immediately mm. because it reminded me of I would fly to a room, five hours, not know anybody in the room, and hopefully meet one person. Always. <laughs> I mean, hopefully. Yeah. Leaving that my turns into something. Hopefully me leaving my family, flying five hours, staying in some whatever shit accommodations I could find, would lead me to one meeting, one person that would lead me to a follow-up. Yep. And that's how I started my career. That's a bar. That's, that's the... Ugly truth. People ask me, what's the secret? I don't sleep much, and I don't see my family much. That's the secret. Mm. You like that? Because you can do that too. Stop, you, know, been... you know the crazy bar <laughs> that you just said? Let's say I was doing that like before I got on, I would always go to these like pan these speaking panels, you know, of different, it'll be like an exec that's like the radio guy at like a certain label. I was just trying to get all the information. And let's say we have like a Drewski, right? Let's say if I wanted Drewski as a starving artist to like, you know, post one of my music. Okay, I go to, I know I'm not gonna DM Drewski and get to him, so I go to who does Drewski follow? Okay, he only followed 93 people. Okay, so this person he post off, and so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna link with this person if that makes sense. So, like you said, just making that connection that leads to another connection if that yeah, makes sense, yeah. and just always trying to be open, receiving wow. to information. I wish it, I wish wow. it was just a DM, man. Wow. You know what? I, I mean, it's just I'm brutal, bro. I've seen you yeah. in those rooms. You see, but it's just brutal, and I watch you come behind me in those same rooms. Exactly, it's, it's very fucking brutal. Yeah. And then you speak to these young entrepreneurs, and they try to fast forward and shortcut of the course. process. Yeah. Yeah. So, Stel, you, so to that point, right, you obviously have United Masters. What do you say to young artists that are watching this right now? You know, you always talk about, like, having the information. What information, what questions should they be asking when they're trying to get on, when they're talking to that label? I just believe today that creators, the momentum is behind you. Brands are moving from 30-second spots on network television there's nothing on network television. Sports. sports. It's only if, if it's not NFL or NBA or sports, the money's going to you guys. Absolutely. Right? I'm so creators, right? Specifically creators. How do you now put yourself in position? Because now you're replacing Turner. Yeah. You're replacing cable channels. They're taking billions of dollars and saying, we know it's not working there. We're putting it here. Mm. And you're gonna get some percentage of that money. 
What are you doing to be prepared for that opportunity? How are you managing your fan base? How are you preparing your page and the assets that you well, manage also, to, to be able to deal with that? Also, that, that would be my uh, conversation with artists, creators, at all stages. Because also, also, that's where the money's Steve, going. But also, all that money comes, but it also comes with some strings. Say it like this. Do it like this. Now you've blown up and you work with brands. How do you work on that creative process of being yourself, but also delivering for the brand? Because you're getting paid for it, obviously. Uh, I got Chauncey, uh, who is one of my good friends that I grew up with. He's on my team, and he honestly like helps me out with everything creative that I do, anything comedy, all that. And I like to include him in the brand stuff that I have going on because he helps and he comes in with the creative directing and like make sure nothing's corny, make sure we can yeah. do what we want. It's all you know, brand. not go too far with it, but at least yeah. know like this is us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We nah. don't need nobody else to show us what we can do. Like we already know what we can do. So I try to keep it in inside and Organic. like and yeah, and make sure he can get paid as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't need to bring a creative director. I got that. Cool. Yeah, I don't need to bring you can do your consulting. Just look, 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 he can't wait to laugh. <laughs> you get that from the, the label. Consulting, sometimes? right. Yeah, but... You get the label pushing on you to make a certain sound? No, and, and it's like the same with brands. Like what Drew was saying, just make it authentic as possible because the engine that drives everything that make the brands possible, that make things like this possible is the music, you know? So I try to keep that as authentic to me as possible. And I only play the label record. It's kind of something I kind of learned. I only play them the music that I already done heard 10,000 times that I already know I'm in love with these songs. Really? So the label don't be in the studio with you? You don't mm -hmm. let nobody from the label in the studio with you? Um, Dallas will pull oh, up Dallas, on me. You know, yeah, 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 Dallas will pull up on me. But, Shout you know, out to family. Dallas. Shout He's out to Dallas. Do they try to be, like, force you to make certain sound, certain music and stuff? No, they they know better than trying okay. with me, you know? <laughs> like, it's, it's just not gonna happen. Not all money is good money, man. Mm -hmm. If you don't really give a fuck about me, you just want to borrow my audience, I don't want to do business with do you. Do, do you? Do you? You guys go put everything through that funnel? I'll be trying to find that balance because I say no to probably 95%. You stay of that real money. chill and low, yeah. And But it's also trying to find that balance like, yo, we still got to get to the bread, but also like, I just say no to 95% of things now because I just try to make everything like on brand to who I am just as a human being. I know it sounds like cliche, no, I but I no. think that's, I, I can't ever lose let me that ask you foundation because then I'll lose the people. Have you ever regretted saying no? Have you ever said no and then saw something that was like, fuck, maybe I should have said yes to that? Yeah, it was this Maroon 5 song. It's uh, called Memories. <laughs> it was after it my... Exactly. It was, it was uh, funny, though. It was my... After my... It was probably, like, two or three months after my first album. And again, I, I thought about it. Like, I cut the... I did the... My initial feeling was, I'm gonna cut this motherfucker. I did it, but then I thought about it. I'm like, is it too early in my career to do a pop record this big? Yes. If that makes sense. And the manager was talking to my manager about, man, that's like... Tough, man. That's tough, man. That's tough, how many, like, you know, um, he was like, the song is called Memory, so they had it plugged in before the song came out. Like, yeah, when you open up the uh, the Photos app on your phone and Memories, this song is going to play on every iPhone and this and this. So we knew it was going to be a smash, but I'm like, yo, it might be too early on in my career to do a pop record. I ain't going to lie to you. His, so wait, 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 wait. But at what point did you go like, fuck, maybe I should have did it? Um, when, and why? Uh, yeah. when I just heard it, when I got in the Uber one time and I just heard it, but I still don't regret it because I have no regrets whatsoever, right? But I was just like, I just wonder what would be different if I did do that. But like, just looking back now, I'm happy that I, that I didn't do it. But actually, I can't even say I'm happy. I'm like 50-50 on it. Well, what do you think? Of course Maroon 5, a pop act, wants some. All these fucking pop acts want rappers on these songs. Yeah. That's like, that's called That's old, obvious, that's been around forever. Right? So now they want them on the joint. Whether you deserve it or not is a different conversation. Yeah. They they need you. They yeah. need yeah. they need you. Okay. They're not doing you a favor. You're doing them a favor. But early on in your career, you don't feel that way. Right? You don't That's, feel that but, way. But, but no. he said no. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all about these young dudes. He said no to the money and the exposure. Why I believe it was the right thing to do is because you don't need that impression. You're developing and. Credibility. Yeah. Like when you develop enough credibility, when you build enough of that base, then you can do stuff like that. Remember, Jay told me one time, developing having credibility is great because you get a chance to use it, and use it. He could do records like Show Me What You Got. Yeah. Right. He could do Hollywood, and the shit don't work. But yet nobody says, Oh, fucking Jay is not Jay Z. Yeah. You develop a bank of credibility where you could actually apply it. You were too early there. Yeah. Suppose the shit didn't work. 
to go for it. The risk is not worth it. Absolutely. You're risking your whole career on a pop song that you really don't even understand yet. Yeah. So, so, so you made a great decision. Thank you. So speak, speaking of knowing <sighs> when it's the right time, I've always been intrigued by when someone's successful, right? We always talk about keeping the main thing the main thing. You made a monumental decision you know, recently, Clutch Athletics. Why Clutch Athletics? Why now? I'm a, I think it's because I'm a, I'm a creator at heart. And that's, it's the exact same reason I didn't call the company Rich Paul Sports. Mm. You know, and I think these are two separate entities. Clutch Sports Group is one. Clutch Athletics is a separate entity that doesn't even intertwine with Clutch Sports Group outside of the name. So, so if I'm an athlete signed for representation, doesn't mean I'm affiliated to Clutch Got athletics. no entitlement to Clutch Athletics. We're treating this the same way as a Nike, a Under Armour, Adidas, or whomever. But it's, it's very... It's laser focused on performance, training, apparel community. with functionality and style. And I'm, you know, I'm going back into the community. This is green because it's for a community. A Clutch Athletics, anything Clutch Athletics co-branded with New Balance, it has a green tag that New Balance only does with Clutch Athletics because it's for the community that we live and play. Mm. So we found what we thought, what we feel is a white space of, and an opportunity to really focus there on the athlete, being athlete tested, but also athlete trusted. And so for me, you can't put me in a box and you can't possibly think, oh, because this has been great that I don't wanna do that. Right. And I'm definitely not gonna be 70 years old at high school tournaments. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh gosh, that's, right. that's- Rich, on that note, let me ask you something also. Corday asked earlier about our kids, the four of us are fathers, I know, I know. Um, if yours, if little Rich came to you and said he want to be an agent, what would you say? I would say, Richie, if you want to be an agent, great. But before you be an agent, I want you to go work at McDonald's, Subway, a restaurant, because we're in the service business. And then I would say to him, what type of agent do you want to be? Because a lot of times, and the reason why I wanted to start Clutch Sports Group in the beginning was because they were making it about the money. Everything was about the money. And I felt like that was a cortisone shot to the detriment of the individual. Because when you're advising someone on life decisions and you're only making it about the money, yeah. then that means for every mistake that you made or for every you know, step of preparation that you didn't take, you bring the money back up to mask exactly. that. To mask the shit. And By the way, out. this is so... You're the only other person I've ever heard say that. Yeah. I managed Nas and I managed Track Masters. Mary J. Blige, I never had a contract. That was my version of that. Mm. You can find me any given time. I mean, you, I didn't have an album cycle. All these management contracts around album cycles and no that other shit. I never took any of that. And I had never commissioned a publishing check. Why not, Steve? You wrote the song, man. Why should I get 20% of it? 10% of it? I, I, I knew for a fact, to Rich's point, that me representing you had intrinsic value to me mm. that you weren't going to be a part of. Absolutely. So why would I take every single fucking nickel I could get from you in a publishing check, as a manager, or even a contract? You should find me whenever you want. So and, and in but my, I believe in myself, and, and I that, believe in myself. that was that was actually the weird leverage, because you don't I'm, you don't think for one second I'm doing it for the check. You can find me whenever you want. And so most agents walk on eggshells and they tell you yes 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 it's yes 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 yes, trash. and they have a business card and a big office. Who gives a shit about any of that, right? And people say, well, you're not going. We're not going to. How, how much time you gonna be able to have? I'm, I'm gonna be there 100% of the time that you need me to be there. Mm -hmm. what, is, what do you hope that you've, your accomplishments, what you've done with Clutch, changes for the next Rich Paul, whoever he or she is? I would hope that you can look like me, come from any walk of life, and still be given an opportunity to be who you ultimately can grow to become.
Give it up to black people. Black, black success. But I do, I do want to get to Drewski. Like, what yeah. your goals were when you first got on? It's like you want followers, you want likes, you want to be verified. You've kept going. Like, you got on, you yeah. hosted a tour, you have your own, you have a movie coming out. Like, yes. yes. Talk to us a little about that, like what like uh, the goals have been. Because Mav always says, we, all success buys you is an opportunity to do it on a bigger platform, yes, right? So 100%, 100%. have you felt that? I, I was in my first movie uh, this year with Chloe Bailey and uh, with uh, Tina Gordon directing it and Will Packer producing it. Yeah, man, y'all go see Praise This. But I think, honestly, the goal for me was, was not all the little social media shit. Like, I didn't really care about that. I was big on, like, looking at the Will Smiths of the world or the Jamie Foxes, mm -hmm. like I was big on like Chris Farley, you know what I'm saying? I was watching all that growing up. So I think the main goal for me was just trying to be like number one, like the biggest comedian, like the biggest actor in the world. Like, so I didn't really care, but I know this is my generation of things with the whole social media thing, but you know, I, I always just wanted to be the best. I didn't really care. Are you taking it really serious, like taking acting classes and shit? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I remember when I first DM Drewski in like 2020, I'm like, yo, I can't wait to see you in movies. This yeah, is like yeah. early on. Yeah. I don't know if you remember it. He said, I don't remember that. But <laughs> I will go back and check that DM because <laughs> I knew he lied about yeah, that. If I would have seen that in 2020, nigga, we would have been linked up, man. Not a, you did. He was like, appreciate it, big bro. Oh, okay, yeah, I seen that. Drewski, yeah, 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 yeah. for young unsigned artists watching this, what's your could have been records pitch to them? Um, for young unsigned artists, man, I, I influence everybody to come fuck with us, for real. Like, what uh, you offering? I'm offering 99 one. 99% uh, me, uh, they retain one. Retain, mm. you know, that means they, they hold on to that 1%. Jules, but hold it's hold a very good United camera, Masters. There's somebody I want you to talk directly into the camera, yeah. your pitch to an artist. Uh, come on down, it could have been records, man. Uh, if we don't do anything, we're gonna fuck you out that deal. <laughs> Appreciate you. Hell yeah, nigga. Yeah. 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 I'm a part of Juski's team. Oh, yeah. got it. High yeah. level. Richard's side, yes. Yeah. Oh, got yeah. it. I didn't know that. You know, he's at the same agency as me. Oh, yeah. You at UTA? You clicked up UTA, yeah. Oh, he's at UTA. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. he's a partner at yeah, UTA. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you know, know we've been. Oh, you got your hand in a little bit more than me, though. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't talk to you about that. <laughs>